1966 RCA Victor 12 inch portable black and white TV. This thing is rare. Why? Solid state. And they call it New Vista, but it does not use a New Vista tube in the tuner. And look at the symbol there. It's PNP transistor arrows pointing in. 1966. There were not many solid state TVs in existence in 1966 and definitely not American made. Of course, Sony was doing their thing and some other Japanese stuff, but RCA says so a KCS 153B. It's dirty. I drug it down out of an attic. This is when solid state television was in its extreme infancy. All but one screw was missing out of the back, so it's definitely not a virgin. It has been popped many times, which is possibly not a good thing, but it's filled with epoxy dome transistors, the early silicon transistors, which seem to have a very high failure rate. It's got tons of electrolytics in it. It's like all the power transistors are down here on the bottom. Power transformer set. like some work has been done here we're going to check the CRT and hope that's hope the CRT is good I don't know if the socket is broken or what's going on here uh, I guess that's what's going on the pins are all pulling out of it. This is a 12BN4. So we're going to test it. And actually I think I have to stand corrected. It has a uh, it has a rectifier tube in it. What is that? A 2BJ2? Two BJ two, but the tuner does not have any tubes in it. But the rest of it's all solid state. I guess they had still not perfected high voltage solid state rectification yet. So thanks to our friend uh, Verona Crisis, the noise floor has dropped to almost zero. The jets have dropped off to almost nothing and as well as the general aviation stuff. So and as soon as I say that we'll probably get rolled on here by something. Well that's not a good look, is it? Set up. Oh siren. And here comes the air pane. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Because that's like 
That's like open cathode dead. It is glowing. Um, and maybe what we do is we get a different CRT tester and get a second opinion because this is like, like I said, open cathode dead. And I'm at seven and a half volts on the heater. So what happens is the little connecting wire to the cathode will break off and it just this is what you get just absolute no emissions at all but let's grab a different CRT tester and get a second opinion so I was looking in here uh, for this CRT tester and there was no 12 BN4 so I came down to the parts list in Sam's and it says 12 BNP4 but I could swear on the schematic, let me see, I could swear on the schematic it says 12BN4, and that other CRT tester listed a 12BN4. See, 12BN4, there's no P there. Well, okay, I double check, 12BN4, 12BNP4, the setup is the same. So, we're connected here. Appropriate socket, appropriate setup. Same thing, dead, completely dead. There is a cathode weld function, but you got to at least get it to touch, and, and then you can use this thing to weld it. It's a temporary fix. It, you know, basically what it does is it just discharges a capacitor and kind of sparks the thing together. But but this thing is just dead. Let's let's go up here on the filament. Crank it up. Let's heat it up a little bit. I don't want to go too high. I don't want to blow the filament out. But this thing just looks like it's got a gazillion hours on it. And being solid state, the, the circuitry probably outlasted the CRT. Yeah, this thing is just dead. I mean, it is dead. It is a zero. You know what? I'm going to try the other adapter. Actually, what are there? A couple other. Just in case the book got it wrong. But I don't think both books would get it wrong. But it's worth a shot. Same thing. Dead. Okay, I think I got all these back in here right. And I have a feeling this was torn apart like this because someone was trying to diagnose this dead picture too. But I went over this and sort of got those in correctly. Let's just power it up and see what happens. This is going to be the disappointment of disappointments if the CRT is dead in this because this thing has got to be one rare TV. Here we go. Hmm, I smell something burning. That's always good. Let's see, where's the brightness on this? CRT is glowing, so at least I got two of the wires in there, right? Contrast, horizontal hold, vertical hold. So this is on volume and brightness. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's do some voltage checks on the pins of the CRT. I don't expect anything because the CRT is dead. So the yellow wire is a cathode. That should vary by turning the brightness control. And of course, the lower the voltage, the brighter the CRT. So that is in fact what's happening here. So that looks good. So with the brightness all the way down, we have 64 volts. With the brightness all the way up, we have no volts. Okay, some of these are pulses rather than DC voltages, but we can still check them. Um, they give us an indication if the high voltage is working, which I'm pretty sure it is. So let's see, pin 3... Uh, one, two, three, the red. We have uh, 190 volts there. 195 volts on the red. So yeah, our, our high voltage flyback is working. So really, that's all you need. You need high voltage. You need a few hundred volts here. You need this pulled as low to ground and you need high voltage for the there to be a raster and of course we don't have a raster because we don't have a CRT so too bad it's a really cool set really got to be really rare so there's the uh, flyback and a little high voltage rectifier tube. I guess that could be bad, but I don't know. Two CRT testers aren't going to really lie. So check out this transistor with the old school RCA logo on it. Is that cool or what? Anyway, it's a very cool TV that needs a 12 BNP4 and it needs some other work because it was totally quiet as you heard well it kind of makes sense now the one screw holding the back on the tape around the CRT socket whoever last worked on this came up with the same conclusion I did and said it's it's junk we're gonna put one screw back in it and throw it in the attic anyway that's that's too bad because when it was when it was retired, you probably still could have gotten that CRT. Anyway, there's a look at a 1965-66, very early RCA KCS 153B black and white portable solid state. This didn't end up the way that it should have, so... I have a Philco radio repair video, a little transistor radio that I fixed up. I'll put that at the end of this video. As Kenny Rogers would have said, you have to know when to walk away. And a dead CRT, you walk away. Drokel Crawfish McVleibelbeiser. All right, as promised from a previous video, vintage Philco Ford transistor pocket radio solid state from 1972 hopefully we're going to repair this radio today and bring it back to life it's a lovely puke green yellow and I was able to get the schematic on it there was some botch botching inside which I'll show you when we powered it up it did nothing so not any sound from the speaker so I took a look and there's a bunch of botched work here it looks like there was a headphone jack right here that was removed and I don't know what the owner was thinking but you can see that wire there and also we have a wire another wire to the speaker that's cut and we have a 33 ohm resistor that's connected to this piece of telephone wire that's bodged on to this resistor right here. 
So we look at the schematic. And we see our 33 ohm resistor there is actually supposed to be the ground for the headphones. So it's basically 33 ohms in series with the headphones so it doesn't blow your hearing out or blow your headphones out. But the speaker should be connected directly to this point right here which is this 30 microfarad capacitor. And even though this is a SAMS, this looks like an original Philco Ford service manual. It has a very comprehensive dial cord uh, instructions, which we'll need because the dial cord is broken on this. So it's got good alignment instructions. Yeah, courtesy of Philco Ford. So this is actually a legit Philco Ford service manual, which is great. So let me get the circuit board out of here and let's look at it and see what's going on. Well, for starters, it... Oh crap, is that broken? That's one of the... Crap. That's the... Um dial cord goes around that man that's a bummer might have to do something there uh, like put a standoff and a longer screw here or something I'll come up with something okay I love how the tuning capacitor is all melted and caked with solder uh, we got a broken lead from the antenna. I don't believe that this should be on the bottom. This is the antenna wire. It's probably what caused the tuning string to break. That should probably go through that little hole right there. That little hole and it should be on top. So what, what a mess. Let's try and find where the speaker connects. Is that this right here? I mean, just look at this guy's soldering. Is this the 30 microfarad right here? It is. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the speaker wiring up. It actually shows on the schematic here right where the speaker connects. So we're going to connect it in the appropriate spot. Okay, I think I got this hooked up to the right place. You look here, it says AM antenna, AM oscillator, so I think I got that hooked up to the right place. I'm not sure. I got the speaker hooked up. Let's get a 9 volt and see what it does. Continuing on with our Philco Ford pocket radio repair, here we go. Nothing. Totally quiet. Well, I don't see any current draw here. Nothing. nothing. Oh, let's start ohming stuff out. We'll check this connector and the power switch. Okay, it seems like the problem is in this thing. Okay, there's no quartet. But skills test. Oh, 
doesn't have an antenna right now. Which means all the connected devices in your house. So make sure you set your alarm. Your phone is checking every day. Right here's that uh, spot number one. Keep track. Uno, uno. I wonder if this guy tweaked these IF cores on this thing. Looks like they put some type of glue in them at the factory, and no, they do not look like they've been screwed with. That's good. All right, I gotta fix this. This is gonna be interesting. This is quite possibly one of the dumbest dial cord designs in existence, but you know, it's Philco. All style, no quality. So, I mean, I, I got it working, but it's, it's, it's marginal at best. You know, it's, it's bad. It's real bad. And you know, how long until that one breaks off? It's just, it's bad engineering. It's Philco. Cheap, junk. Okay, L LA Oldies. Let's, um,. There's Guadalupe Radio, Channel 6. It gets Channel 6, that's low power broadcast TV, so that's decent. I mean, it, it, it works. Maybe it could use some new electrolytics. It seems like it's lacking a little bit of audio gain on FM. One of these blue electrolytics could be dried out. But are those actually branded Philco? They are. 
I mean, it, it's, okay, so it's three IF stages on the FM and two on the AM. So, I mean, it, it works like how it should. Anyway, there's the repair of a 1972 Philco Ford AM FM puke greenish yellow uh, pocket radio.